Well, hi everyone. Um, I had started this, and I the um, recording didn't take, but I didn't feel like starting over. So I just want to go over on this first page how I approach these problems here. And this is for one and two. Find all of the solutions of the equations in the interval zero to two pi. Okay. Well, now looking at that, I didn't read that the first time through, so that is something that would be good to know. All right. I will adjust that as we go along. Okay. So the identity we're going to use cosine of two x, and this has sine of x in it. So I'm going to use this second one. Replace cosine of 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And then switch things around. Um, write this term first, this term second, and this term third. Then go through and multiply everything by negative 1. So I, we're dealing with a positive here. I went ahead and took 2u squared minus u minus 1 and factored that accordingly. And replaced the u's back with the sine x again. Have 2 sine x plus 1 times sine x minus 1 equals 0. And I'm going to, you get sine of x equals negative 1 half. I'm going to redo this part now that I read the directions a little more carefully the second time through. Um, the um, Sine of x is negative one half at seven pi over six. Let me write that over here. Seven pi over six and eleven pi over six on the unit circle, and it's equal to one right here at um, sine of x equals one at pi over two. So there's our three solutions on that one. Now this second one. I got tangent of x over 2 minus sine of x equals 0. I chose this one, um, just having a single term in the bottom that seemed a little more appealing to me. So I replaced tangent of x over 2 with 1 minus cosine of x over sine of x, my sine of x. When you got this, it's always good to try to get a common denominator. So sine of x times sine of x over sine of x is sine squared x over sine of x. And then put those together, you got 1 minus cosine x minus sine squared x over sine of x. Um, remember, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, so I replace the sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. It's 1 minus 1 cancels. You got your negative cosine x and your positive cosine squared x. And um, I'm going to just recheck this again. And on this one, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Let's, let's stay focused here. Cosine squared x minus cosine x over sine of x equals 0. So I multiplied both sides by sine of x. And I got cosine squared x minus cosine x equals 0. Cosine squared x minus cosine of x equals 0. Factor that, got cosine of x equals 0, or cosine of x equals 1. And then something I want you to notice, I have sine of x here in the um, denominator. And... I just want you to look at the solutions we get, because you get you do have to check to make sure you don't have extraneous solutions. Now, if cosine of x is zero here at pi over two. Um, it's also zero at three pi over two, and cosine of x equals one over here at. Um, Let's see, 0 to 2 pi, 0 is the inclusive one, at 0. 
Okay, so I have these three solutions, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 0. And um, the tangent of 0, now that's sine over cosine, so that's okay. We can take the tangent of pi over 4. Okay. Tangent of 0. Sine is 0. Cosine is 1. So I think all of them work, actually. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with these three answers for that one. Okay, now number 3. Um, sine of u is negative 4 fifths. u is in the fourth quadrant. So I drew this. Um, the negative 4 for the y and then the 5 for the r um, and if you do it's a Pythagorean triple there so if you solve for that side you get 3 I used we need to find sine of 2u cosine of 2u and tangent of 2u so sine is 2u is 2 sine u cosine u so I used that identity and just multiplied it out Cosine of 2u, um, since sine of u was given, I decided to just go with that one. 1 minus 2 sine squared u. 1 minus 2 times 16 twenty fifths. That's 25 twenty fifths minus 32 twenty fifths. That's what this multiplies out to be. And that's negative 7 twenty fifths. Then I just decided to use the identity sine over cosine, that's tangent. Sine of 2u over cosine of 2u equals tangent of 2u, and I got 24 sevenths there. Now, number 4, I got that the sine of u is 12 thirteenths. u is in the second quadrant. Find the sine of u over 2, cosine of u over 2, and tangent of u over 2. Okay, and I want to point out that u over 2, if u is in the second quadrant, if I divide everything by 2, u over 2 is somewhere, it's less than pi over 2 and greater than pi over 4, so it's in the first quadrant. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because you got all these plus minuses here. Um, they're going to be positive because the half angle is in the first quadrant. So their sine and cosine are both going to be positive on that. Okay. Now, sine of u over 2, remember I'm using the positive, 1 minus cosine, square root of 1 minus cosine of u over 2. Okay. And then that's 13 thirteenths minus 5 thirteenths is 8 thirteenths times half. That's so square root of 8 over 26. That's square root of 4 over 13. Which square root of 4 over square root of 13, which is 2 radical 13 over 3. 2 over radical 13, which is rationalized as 2 radical 13 over 13. And then cosine, the only difference is this is plus. So when you add, it's 18 thirteenths, 18 26, 9 thirteenths, it's 3 radical 13 over 13. Um, tangent, I could could have made this ratio. It probably would have been pretty easy to just put this over this, sine over cosine, to get our answer. But I chose to use the formula this time. Um, which, which formula did I use? I used this second one, 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. 1 minus 5 thirteenths over 12 thirteenths. 8 thirteenths over 12 thirteenths. Um, keep change flip. And I got 8 twelfths, which is 2 thirds. Alright, so that's the first page. Um, now, start fresh here with the second page. Um, 67 degrees 30 minutes, that's 67.5 degrees. 
and that's not on the unit circle, but 135 is, and 135 divided by 2 is 67.5. So I'm going to use the half angle to get the exact value. Um, now, 67 degrees, 30 minutes is in the first quadrant, so it's going to be positive. It's not going to be the negative answer. So I'm going to go 1 minus cosine of 135 degrees. My degrees is a little big there. Over 2, which equals the square root of, and think of 135 degrees, that's going like, that's the bisector of the second quadrant. And the cosine's negative here, and it's negative square root of 2 over 2. So 1 minus negative square root of 2 over 2 over 2. Um, I'm going to go ahead, change this to 2 over 2, and a minus and a negative. So it's 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. That's my numerator. And then I have over 2 in the denominator. I'm going to keep change flip. And that's 2 plus square root of 2 over 2, instead of divided by 2, times 1 half, which is the 2 plus the square root of 2 over 4. And then I have 2 plus square root of 2 over... square root of 2 plus square root of 2 over square root of 4 which is the square root of 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. Okay, there's the exact answer of that. <clears throat> All right, now tangent of 7 pi over 12, that equals, I'm going to use a half angle again, tangent of 7 pi over 6 over 2. And the tangent, the half angle tangent formula. Um, I don't know. I've been leaving this one out. I'll do at least one this way. I probably would instinctively go this way though, but I'm going to, I'll use this one. So I'm going to take the sine of 7 pi over 6, because that's the half, that's the angle we are taking half of to get this angle. Over 1 plus cosine of 7 pi over 6. Well, let's see, where's 7 pi over 6? This is 6, it's right here. The um, sine looks to be negative 1 half. The cosine looks to be negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, let's work with that denominator a little bit. So I got negative one half over two. Are you okay if I just go two minus square root of three over two? So it's two over two minus square root of three over two, and then put it together. Let's keep change flip. And that's negative one half times two over two minus square root of three. Now I'm... Okay. I'm going to have to use a conjugate here. And I probably wouldn't have had to if I'd have done it the other way. To rationalize the denominator, I'm going to go 2 plus square root of 3. I'll multiply this by 2 plus square root of 3. And I got negative 2 minus square root of 3 on the top. And then this is 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So I get negative square root of 2. Nope. Negative 2 minus square root of 3. All right. Okay, there's that part. I'm going to 
cut this one off and pick up with the next one on a new uh, 